and welcome into Listen Up. I'm Joey Trincali, Alex Coma, alongside me. We're here another week, and let's start with the top five topics as we always do, and we'll talk about that crazy football team that loves to break our hearts. Tech lost to Duke this weekend. What happened in the game, and what's going to happen for the rest of the season? Where does Virginia Tech go from here? Ugh. First of all, let's just say that right now. <laughs> That's the only good way to describe this game. But I think that, you know, when you have a bye team as a football team, you know, there's one of two ways it can go. You can get a lot of guys healthy, you can start feeling fresh, or it can knock you out of your rhythm exactly like this bye week seems to have done for our poor Virginia Tech Hokies. They were all talking about how the bye week came at a great time for the offense, gave Logan a little bit of time to heal up, gave David Wang and his shoulder a little bit of time to heal up, Trey Edmonds, and instead the offense came out and delivered its worst performance since Alabama, possibly even more depressing Definitely considering worse. the quality of the defense that they were facing. Definitely this worse. is a Blue Devils defense that allowed Pittsburgh, a team that Virginia Tech just allowed nine measly points to to just run up and down the field against them and they had a hard time getting to those 10 points it was it was a struggle to get on the board let alone hit double digits and that is really depressing especially in a game in which the Hokies outgained the Blue Devils by 189 yards held on to the ball for 20 more minutes than Duke did and had their third best rushing performance of the season the difference Logan Thomas four interceptions yeah, that's not good. That's not good. And I, I think that you've pretty much summed up what happened in the game. So yeah, I'll say. I'm going to leave <laughs> that one. On from that, yeah. uh, but here's the thing, and I, I know it sounds a little silly because it doesn't feel like that anymore, but Jack Tyler said it and said it best that every goal that they had going into the Duke game is still very much attainable. It doesn't even matter, let's say, mm-hmm. if Miami beats Florida State this weekend. Let's just say the craziness happens <laughs> Miami beats Florida State. It doesn't matter because if Virginia Tech wins out and beats Miami, which they would have to do to win out, then they're still going to the ACC championship game. So for me, it's disappointing mostly because you built so much momentum and you started to look like a semblance of a team, a team that had an identity, and, and the offense just didn't do enough. What did we say last week? We said they're finally finding this identity and the offense just needs to be mediocre. And it wasn't. It just it. wasn't. It wasn't even close, to be honest. And I, you know, I've been one of the biggest Logan defenders mm. um, time and time again. Because he's he's throwing to guys that are walk-ons that are you know all this, and and the running game isn't good and the offensive line isn't great either. But it's hard to continue to defend him when he's just missing passes and just not progressing through his reads and you know his footwork is off. How is his footwork still off? He's been playing quarterback for four years now. It, it just I I have a hard time with it. But at the same time, like I said. It's still all in front of them, but they have a really, really hard game this weekend. And BC yeah. is not a pushover. Yeah. If anything, I thought this Boston College game would be the trap we game. We talked about that. And that was supposed of, to be the trap game. And in game. a lot of ways, the pit game, I don't know, maybe it was the trap game, trap game. They were looking ahead to the trap game, so they lost the actual trap game. I don't know. I think that as you, you're absolutely right when you say that all of their you know, goals, because we know this is a team that aims for ACC titles and not for national titles. Okay, well, all of, yeah, a little snipe there fair for Frank. Fair this year. But... In any case, uh, we know this is a team that aims for ACC titles, and that is very much still attainable. Mm -hmm. They can, I still think they can beat that Miami team. I think they can. The more I see of them, the less impressed I am. And when you consider that that's really the one truly difficult game left on the schedule, it certainly makes me feel more confident. Um, Going off of that, what you were saying about Logan, though, I would say that if of all the bad games I've watched him play, and over the course of the three years he's had as a starter, I've seen a few. Mm -hmm. I think I'm out. I think I'm all the way out. I've, I, too, have defended him in a lot of ways. He's had Brian Steinspring and Michael Kane holding mm-hmm. him back. All the factors that you mentioned with the other players on offense. But you know what? I think I'm done. He was missing wide-open men at least four different times, including on that final interception. Willie Byrne running free down the field. He tries to force the ball to Dimitri Knowles. It gets tipped, intercepted, and that's game. And, and that drives me crazy that he can't display that vision. Even with all the times we heard him talk about how Scott Leffler's new offense was helping him go through his progressions mm-hmm. and he was getting to the fifth progression and hitting fullbacks in the flat, I just I don't buy it anymore. When he gets knocked a little bit around and gets that confidence knocked out of him, it seems to all just so like, fall to pieces and all he can do is run. He'll take off running and he ran for 101 yards, but I think that was to the real detriment of the offense and, and I'm sort of over it. Whether they win the ACC, whether they go to a BCS Bowl, I don't care. I'm out on Logan Thomas. And here's the thing. The, the play that really 
summed up the whole game and, and the one that really frustrates me because if you miss a pass you miss a pass if you miss a read it happens yeah. you're a college kid yep. uh, you, they're not the nfl this is not Peyton Manning, tom brady how on earth at the end of the first half you throw moving this way to your right across the end zone when you are guaranteed a field goal yep. to get it within or to, to tie, uh, the to game. tie it up to at, tie sorry, the game excuse me to tie it up at the time how you make that throw there is literally no way you can make that throw and, and that's the one that that really i look at that yeah. just you circle because it's a whole different game if it's three three and a half yeah. and you, you just need to put that one in the stands or take a sack make cody Jernell hit a 20 some yard field goal for all of his problems he can still do that i hope but enough about the Hokies. We're going to move on, I think, to something a little bit more encouraging. The NBA is coming back. Thank God it's back this week. Let's hear your championship finalists and your choice for MVP. Whew. Um, MVP is easy uh, because I'm not betting against LeBron James at the moment. Oh. Yeah. I was going to say Steve Blake. Steve okay. Blake, yeah. I'm a big fan of Steve Blake. <laughs> starting starting for the Lakers. Yes. Oh, man. Oh, man. Um, the Lakers are not one of the two finalist <laughs> teams I have. No, MVP, it's easy. It's LeBron. Uh, I think that maybe, again, Kevin Durant can give him a run for his money. Maybe Derrick Rose because he's going to take mm. the Bulls to a whole different level. Simply because of that, people give him votes. And you can't discount people getting tired of voting for LeBron. True. Which That's is, the reason he won his first MVP. Uh, yeah. I, well, I thought... I thought he had a pretty good case, but I know what you're saying. He does, but still. Yeah. So so MVP for me is it's pretty easy, and LeBron is seemingly getting better. If you watch him night in and night out, it is so clear how much better he is than everyone else. In terms of finalists, I know a lot of people are kind of actually going away from the Heat because they're getting older, and, and you know, the, their, their team is kind of a hodgepodge of players that have somehow figured it out, and they've been taken to the brink the last two years when they've won, but I still think that they are – clearly the favorites at this point and like i was saying about the mvp i have no no way am i voting against lebron right now and i i feel like i've said this the last few years but i'm gonna go i don't want to say oklahoma city because they really <laughs> scare me because i really think they are an extremely extremely flawed team mm. but i think that once westbrook comes back kevin durant i feel like this is a year for him where he feels like he can beat this miami team maybe that it's finally click like this yeah. is the year that they can actually do it so i will be kind of boring and go okay see miami yeah that's reasonable um i think that again i, I can't disagree with you about mvp as much as i'd like to yeah. but when it comes to the finalists i think that miami could very easily be the eastern conference finalist once again but at that same time they had a really tough time they getting did. through the eastern conference last year and that was when they were only getting beat up by one physical team the indiana pacers now you've got the Chicago Bulls who can do a lot of the same things that that Pacers team can and, do, and, and even the Brooklyn Nets, if you want to think about it in that way. Those are three different teams, all of whom have the kind of size that Miami just doesn't right now. When you're counting on Greg Oden to be like, sort of the man in the middle for you when you actually have to play like a traditional starting five. And Greg Oden's knees, more specifically. Yes, more specifically. It, it, it should make you nervous. And so while I think that they've proved over the course of the last several years that you know we shouldn't write them off just because they've got you know creaky role players in odd situations I mean look at what Mike Miller has done in the biggest of situations while contributing nothing in the regular season Zero. so I think that there's absolutely reason to believe that Miami can still make it I just think that if there were to be any year where you were to see Indiana or Chicago sneak into the finals this would be a really good year and then that sort of sets up an interesting 2014 the Certainly. problem the problem becomes the fact that I'm not so convinced that anyone in the Western Conference is ready to beat them. It could easily be the Spurs back there again. If Kawhi Leonard continues to take the kind of steps that he showed in the postseason, that's a huge piece for them. But they very much just said, let's bring everyone back. Let's roll it back. Let's see if we can't do it again. It wouldn't surprise me if they could. And the Thunder, I think that a lot of the problems that they have aren't postseason problems necessarily. You know, when you get locked down into the postseason, offense becomes more at a premium. If Kevin Durant can figure out a way to say, hey, I'm the guy, and just score the ball the way LeBron can, I think this team can experience success, especially if they find a way to move Kendrick Perkins during the season, finally. So what are your official? I want to hear the official picks. You want to hear the official yeah, picks? I okay. Do. Uh then I'll be bold and I'll say Chicago in the East okay. and uh the Spurs in the West. We should mark that down. All right. That's important. 
It's <laughs> important. I'm not going to be here next by the time this happens. Yeah, Don't okay. talk about that. Come on, man. That's not cool. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the NBA a little bit more. Let's talk about some Dark Horse teams. You've kind of touched on it already, but let's get into that with a little more detail. Yeah, I think really the Dark Horses that you have to look at come out of the Eastern Conference. Obviously, if I'm picking Chicago, that's not necessarily a Dark Horse. I mean, anyone but Miami. Yeah, certainly yes. a non-traditional team, and I think the Pacers can't be ignored. I really like a lot of what they did this offseason. They were very careful about not overextending themselves for the future. They're building for both the present Mm -hmm. and the future, I think. And it really all sort of hinges on Paul George, much the way that Oklahoma City has been waiting for Serge Ibaka to make that proverbial leap to really take the team to the next level. I think Paul George is that player right now for the Pacers. He was all NBA last year. He certainly could be again this year. But it's really sort of on him to become the kind of guy that can do this game in, game out, especially in the playoffs. And same goes for Roy Hibbert. We'd never seen him play complete games offensively, defensively for a full season, including playoffs, until last year. Mm -hmm. If he does it again, maybe Miami gets beat up coming out of these opening rounds. They're certainly a dark horse that's worth considering, I think. Yeah, I think that it's definitely all about Paul George, though, because Mm -hmm. he's got to go from star to superstar. Superstar. Yeah, I mean, that's he's got to go from being... All star to top eight. Yeah. I mean, that's really the, the 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 thing that he has to do for Indiana to become. And he can. He's got talent I, I, both ways. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, in the East, other than Indiana, well, I, okay, I'm with you <laughs> in that. The dark horses are really the top because the East is very top heavy. Yeah. So Brooklyn, obviously, um, and then Indiana and Chicago are all teams that I still kind of consider dark horses just yeah. because you've seen anyone it, other than Miami. The, yeah. The world champions twice in a row are in the East as well, and any of those three teams I think are ones to look at. After that, the East is dead. It's 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 such a it's such a it's mishmash. Just, it is yeah. a mishmash because I already used hodgepodge one, so I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to change it up. Uh, but there's I mean there's a lot of teams. I'd love to talk about my Wizards, but they're certainly not a title <laughs> not contender yet. right now. Give I'd like to bit. see them make the playoffs. That'd be super duper. <laughs> uh, but for me in the West, I think the West is really interesting. Mm. And my dark horse out there, I have to say, is Golden State because yeah. they showed last year during the playoffs that they can that they can win right now, and that Steph Curry is a star in the making if he can stay healthy. Then they get Andre Iguodala, so now you have your shutdown defender. I really like them to take that next leap and be maybe in the top three of the West when we see the playoffs start. If they get home court, that makes them even more formidable because the Oracle is the best place in the NBA really to play, specifically in the playoffs. So out West, I really like... I really like Golden State a lot. Yeah, I I certainly agree with that. I like Golden State a lot. Losing Jarrett Jack worries me a little Mm -hmm. bit. I think it was probably smart of them to not dump, you know, back up the Brinks truck for him. He's a great veteran backup. Right, he's a great veteran backup, but you don't want to be handing him a big contract, especially when you've got so many others on the books. Mm -hmm. And and who knows? I mean, you're looking at a team that's going to have David Lee potentially healthy for the whole year, Andrew Bogut potentially healthy for the whole year. There's a lot of good players. They certainly do, and it really all hinges on much with the heat in Greg Oden's knee, Steph Curry's ankles. I, I really, you know, no, you're right. I would love to see this team be the team that we saw in the playoffs for the whole season they were long because that was a blast to watch. And especially if they can carry that over into the postseason, I think that they would be a real team to take seriously. When you mentioned getting a guy like Andre Iguodala on the perimeter to lock people down, that's something they certainly didn't have last year and they struggled for it. So I would completely agree with them as a dark horse in the West. Otherwise, I think the West is sort of in a similar situation to the East. You've got a couple teams up at the top and there are definitely some teams down below that can make some noise. You know, Minnesota, they are finally going to have everybody healthy. Or are they? Or are they? Yeah, you, you never <laughs> you can really tell <laughs> with David Kahn's boys. So I, I really, I'm interested to see what they can do over the course of a whole year. I think that they might surprise people, not necessarily title contention, but if they find themselves as a top five seed, top six seed even, that would not surprise me in the slightest. And they could be a very hard out in the first round of the playoffs. I would like to see them fail miserably because I want <laughs> Kevin Love to hit the open market like it's hot. Oh, and you think he's going to Washington? I think he's going somewhere. That's Chocolate City. He's got to go to somewhere. (laughs) All right, he's got to go somewhere. So true. All right, I'm done with basketball. What about you? Uh, I am as well, but you go ahead. You got it. You got baseball. All right, we'll talk a little baseball. This has been an entertaining series and a wacky one. Boston is currently 3-2 to two up on the Cardinals, mm-hmm. thank God. How do you see this series turning out? I saw the stat. Not that Boston's played in a ridiculous amount of World Series clinching games, but they've never played in one since 1918 <laughs> at Fenway. So at first I was like, wow, 
I kind of feel like this is definitely going back to St. Louis, but yeah. maybe Boston still gets it done. But when I saw that stat, as stupid as that is, because obviously <laughs> I'm just using arbitrary uh, numbers slash facts here, but I think that Boston finishes it in Boston. Uh, I, as long as as long as St. Louis continues to pitch to David Ortiz, I was just gonna say if they can find a solution, like I don't know, let's Pitch just around. put them on base. <laughs> let's just give them a base. You know, you know just what, St. Louis? I don't want to. I'm sure you're not watching, and I certainly don't want you to win. So by all means, continue to pitch to David Ortiz. But really, honestly, put the man on first base. I guarantee you, it will work out better than what you've been doing. And honestly, I agree. I think Boston will end up winning this one, even though you see some of those things. You know, you think about the history they've got. You see the ticket prices at Fenway are the highest they've ever been Crazy. for a World Series game for that potentially clinching Game 6. That's all reason to worry, I think. But at the end of the day, I think that we have sort of seen that while St. Louis has got a lot of talent, they don't have the hitting to match up with Boston, especially when it comes to one Mr. David Ortiz. And even when you look at you know other role players, Johnny Gomes huge for them and was mostly a platoon player um, up until yeah. the postseason. So I, I really have a lot of confidence in Boston. I certainly hope that they win, and I think that they will sort of lock this one down and end it. And really quick, the, the two kind of crazy finishes, what did you think of those? Uh, uh, I hated the third base one. You did? That's, I, I really did. You not did. think it was a, a obstruction call? No, I, I didn't really. And I don't I don't like any time when the umpires, refs, what have you, insert themselves into a game as big as one that was. Whether it was, you know, a bad call in the Super Bowl. These are the things that you remember. You don't remember the play on the field. And I hate when that happens, regardless of how good or not good I, it might have looked. I do as well. But if it's obstruction, I mean, if he picks his legs up and he stops the guy from scoring, and that's the difference, and Boston goes on to win, yeah. I mean, the series is over. I know. So I, I don't know. I, I was okay with that. I thought that was pretty hilarious that Wong got picked off of uh, first there. <laughs> and that and that Fox missed the play, too. That yep. was great as well. All right, let's finish up the, the – the top five topics. Really quickly, we're going to talk about Brandon Merriweather, everyone's favorite safety. <laughs> He's back from suspension. He made some scathing comments about the league's personal foul policy. He's vowed to hit people in the knees, essentially saying he's going to tear ACLs and to avoid the head. So what do you make of this, and, and does he make any valid points? Well, I want to get this out of the way first. Brandon Merriweather is a jerk. Mm -hmm. He's kind of he's, – he's not a great person, and these comments were like obviously it. meant to be incendiary. But here's the thing. The man has a point. Uh, when you look at what the league is doing with trying to legislate hits to the head out of the game, he's right. Uh, honestly, when you look at it, it's better for players to aim for the lower body and the career enders, tearing the ACLs, hitting at the knees, than it is for them to aim up here, up in the no targeting zone that the league has established, and just get piled on with fines and suspensions. I think it's ridiculous to try and control what these guys are doing in split second decisions. I've always felt this way, and I don't really like Brandon Merriweather, but I think he does bring a lot of attention to what I think is mostly a good point. You know, I, I think that maybe he's the wrong person to do it, no, yeah. but a lot of the things that he's saying, as bluntly as he's saying them, because he didn't just, you know, allude to tearing a ACLs. No, no, he, said, he said, I it. will tear ACLs. He said it. And so that's maybe not the best way to convey this, but they're putting defensive players in a bind. Either hit up high and get fined or hit down low and end careers, neither of which is a good situation. And these guys really are kind of stuck. Uh, yeah, I, I think that you make a lot of great points, and I think that Merriweather does as well. I agree. He's not the guy to make it. He's had a lot of stupid penalties. But even that weekend, uh, I think that they got him for two, and that's kind of why they decided. I really only saw one foul on him in that yeah. game, and it was the one in the end zone. I think the other one, he goes to the to the shoulder, chest on yeah. there or the shoulder or whatever. But f for me, it, it, I'm with you. It's that, you know, there's – way more uh, it's way more discouraging to go after the head and the chest area than it is to go after the knees but the thing is is that you can end someone's career if you hit him in the head too so you it, absolutely can but i think it was game. really revealing Keyshawn johnson said something thoughtful i know strap yourself in but that was basically that he would have rather had a guy come up here because in the way he saw it he said guys come back from a concussion or two they don't come back from acl or two that's for sure all right, moving on. Yeah, move We're going to talk on the lighter subjects, or I should say more depressing subjects. Somehow, Joey is up 3-2. to two. Don't call it a comeback. Stupid <laughs> Matt Stafford. I swear, the Cowboys had Matt that. Stafford. And he ripped Dude, it he's away. my best friend now. Uh, uh, okay, anyway, we're sorry, but the games are really terrible this weekend. We'll get started with Chicago at 
Green Bay. I, I can't pick Green Bay. I, I, I'm i sorry. These are awful games. I, if you want to pick Chicago, go ahead. But without Jay Cutler, I don't really trust the Bears. So I'll go with Green Bay at home. Yeah, Green Bay finally seems to be back on track. They've won, I think, four in a row at this point. So, yes, Packers, please. All right, college football now. Miami at Florida State. I know you're really liking those Hurricanes, right? <laughs> it's a 7-3 matchup, Alex. That is true. It is. But it really probably shouldn't be. Stephen Morris has looked just god-awful against some not very good opponents recently. The Seminoles, I don't know if you know, they are pretty good. They pretty much dismantled NC State at home. I have a hard time seeing them not winning. As much as I'd like to see a little chaos in the ACC, make that win, win on November 9th over Miami mean something, True. I can't take them Seminoles. Oh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm up 3-2, but I'm not that crazy. I'm going Florida State. Fair enough. Moving to the NBA. Open at night, Chicago at Miami. I have a tough time betting against Miami. Yeah? And I'm going to not do it again. I'm going to go with Miami. All right, playing conservative. I'm behind now. I can take a few risks. I would like Chicago. They're out there. They're going to be giving them the rings. I think Derrick Rose is ready to show that he's back, and what better game to do it I will take the Bulls. I like it. Tonight will be interesting. <laughs> All right, uh, NBA again, Golden State at uh, the Los Angeles Clippers. Uh, talk about a high-scoring game. The <laughs> Golden State might be able to run up and down the floor, but the Clippers are going to be one of the more efficient offenses in the league. I think they show it early on. I will take L.A. Lovely. I will go with the Warriors, and I'm feeling great about it. Ooh, feeling great. All right, we got the NHL. We got the Boston Bruins visiting the best team in hockey, Pittsburgh Penguins. Well, not according to record. Uh, <laughs> I will go with the Bruins because you will take the Penguins, and I like to make things interesting. How can I not take the Penguins? They're playing on fire recently. One or two road stumbles, but you know what? I have full confidence. Confidence giving Pittsburgh. All right, let's jack up some threes like we're Jordan Crawford here on the quick hits. LeBron has made it clear that the Heat are not a fan of the Bulls. We don't like them. They don't like us. But Derek Rose back. Is this the best rivalry in the NBA? I'll give it second best. The best rivalry will always be Meta World Peace's multiple personalities versus each other. <laughs> <laughs> Saw a great picture of him in Sports Illustrated holding a dog the other day. It's actually Why not? great. Yeah, it's, it was a nice run that day. All right, nice before run. the Cowboys game this week, Dez wow. Bryant said he could do anything Calvin Johnson does. Johnson proceeded to gain 329 yards. Bryant had a freak out on the sidelines. How do you feel about all this? I actually am okay with the freak out episode. I think that some people, Brian Billick, was making way big of a deal about it. If Brian wants to freak out a little bit, who cares? He's he's a great wide receiver. He can be on my team. Especially because they released the audio of what he was actually saying, and he was mostly saying, we're the best team in the league at this. And, you know, he was very, he was actually very positive, which is shocking. It was a little Des shocking. Brian. I yeah. agree. All right. Speaking of the Cowboys game, science tells us that with a minute and a half left in the game, the Cowboys had a 99% chance of beating the Lions. And then they proceeded to lose. How awesome is that? Well, I was torn. I did love to see it because I do hate the Cowboys. But I had them at Pick'em, and that would have been the difference between us it tying would've. and me losing. So I'm going to go like, eh. We'll give it an eh. It's not awesome. I loved it. It was a great yeah, best yeah, day yeah, yeah. of the year. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> High praise. All right. The Knicks decided to keep Christmas, the younger brother of one JR, who, according to Grantland, <laughs> sucks like an open airlock on a space station. How great are the Knicks? They're great. I mean, they're, they're freaking hilarious. I love this movie. As do I. I just think that Mike Woodson at this point knows his team is a joke and is just in on it. He's like, yeah, Christmas, stick around. Do dumb things with JR. What do I care? Oh, gosh. The Raiders defensive coordinator Jason Tarver was caught on camera this weekend flipping off and dropping the F-bomb at the referees. You gotta love Oakland, am I right? Well, I flipped off those referees and dropped a few F-bombs in that Steelers-Oakland game. So I, I get it, Jason. I'm there with you. <laughs> That's what I was hoping for. Thanks for watching Listen Up this week and tune in next week.